And welcome everybody to the Superheroes Wanted Path to District Leadership. And it's presented by, of course, our DGE, Desiree Wilson from the Point West Rotary Club, and our DGN, Karen Sendro from Laguna Sunrise Rotary Club. I'm your tech support, Randy Smith from ESAC Rotary. Tonight, we're going to be muting everybody while we go through the, the process here. And um, if you do ask a question or if you find yourself unmuted, please mute yourself when you're completed. And feel free to put your questions into the chat box. That's where we want to start taking the questions in the chat box. And please type slowly because I don't read very fast. <laughs> and everybody's going to be muted. And Karen, unmute yourself and Desiree, please. All right. Thank you so much, Randy. We're going to get started. Um, this is the path to district leadership. And I do want to acknowledge another district leader in our uh, midst. We've got on the call in the Zoom meeting tonight, our district governor designate, Sydney Smith from the Rotary Club of Elk Grove. So welcome, Sydney, and welcome, everybody. So this is about your path to district leadership. So we wanna talk about what constitutes district leadership. What does that mean? So we've got three levels there. So if we could start with the first one, district committee chair, that is a district leadership position, being the chair of one of our district committees. Next one is being an assistant governor. And then the next one, is the district governor. So all of these are district leadership. Not everybody has to go and aspire to be a district governor. We've got a lot of great positions within the district that constitute district leadership. So if you have decided that maybe you're interested in one of these three positions, what might you do to prepare? We wanna talk about what do you need to do to get ready? And I'm actually going to call on somebody who has not only gone through all of those levels, but is our current, a current past district governor from my Rotary Club, Point West. I'm going to call on Brian Moore to share with us what he did at, when he decided, yeah, I think maybe I want to be a district leader. What kind of things did you do, Brian? Well, let me share a few. <clears throat> Number one, um, you got... Oops, we lost your voice. Brian, we lost your voice. We lost Brian. Brian, <laughs> Brian we can't, can't hear you. Brian can't hear you. Okay. I think he lost his headset. Head. Brian, your headset's yeah. up. Can't hear us. Can't hear you, Brian. Can't hear us either, apparently. Okay, we'll have him redo it. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. Okay, well. <laughs> That's no. the one thing we, <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> okay, we've got some answers for you. <laughs> so I'm sorry that didn't work with Brian. Would have loved to have heard what he did. But here's a list of things that you want to think about. Attending seminars throughout the Rotary year, the district puts on different seminars. Um, we've got foundation seminars, membership, and that, that goes hand in hand with training too. We do a lot of trainings, um, which we're in right now is district assembly. We're calling it the festival of learning this year, but attend all of those in, in, uh, and in the district assembly, there's 28 classes that you can attend and to start learning about different things. Attend the annual district conference. You get to start talking to people from other clubs, hear what other people are doing here, hear what's happening at the district level. And then you also should be visiting other clubs. You know, if you have only been in your own club, you think every other club does it the same way your club does. And that's not true. Each club has their own vibe, their own way of doing things. Um, and they don't... Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do things and you get ideas and you see a bigger picture of Rotary when you visit other clubs. This next one is really important. If you are really interested in taking on, whether it's a district uh, committee chair, being an assistant governor or the district governor, start talking with current and past leaders. Let them know where your interests are. Let them know where you wanna go. Get to know them 
and let them get to know you. And that's really important because, you know, sometimes it is who you know. Um, working on district events, when we have different events in the district, uh, please, you know, the foundation dinner is a district event. And um, I'm sorry, Brian is saying that he can't hear me either. Can everybody else hear me? Yes. Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay, okay, cool, I'm gonna continue. Sorry, Brian. Um, working on district events, you start working side by side with people. People get to see how you work and who you are. And again, getting to know more about you. I'll really recommend highly learning center courses. And these are at on uh, myrotary.org on the Rotary International website. You go into the learning center and there are courses on everything you ever wanted to know about Rotary, whether it's, um, the foundation, whether it's how to be a club president, it's, I mean, just a whole ton of things on their membership, public image, great way to learn. This one's more on the newer side, Toastmasters. I, I'm sure many of you are aware that we have a partnership. Rotary has just created a partnership with Toastmasters and we're just getting going on that. But, you know, if you wanna be in some of, the, in those roles, being a good public speaker is really imperative and Toastmasters will help you get there. So there's really a lot to be gained from being in Toastmasters. And I will tell you, there are a few courses in the Learning Center on to Toastmasters. So I'd encourage you to check those out. And then leadership training. We currently don't have any leadership training program in the district, but Karen and I are committed to getting that going in the next rotary year. So we're looking at some, in fact, we're gonna test drive one on Saturday. We're gonna go to a session on Saturday and check it out that another district is doing, but we really wanna bring leadership training to this district so that those that want to get into those leadership positions can have that kind of specific training. Okay. Karen, I'm gonna turn it over to you to talk about our first level of uh, district leadership positions. Right, so how to become a district chair? Well, the first thing you wanna do is attend some committee meetings. Well, when, back when social media was really getting strong, I was able to attend meetings um, because that was my forte in marketing uh, with Bob Deering. And it really gave me experience as to what the committees do in this district. And I got to meet so many people outside of my own club. Then you wanna become an active member of the committee, which I did. And then finally, which I did not become uh, the committee chair. So sometimes you just wanna be on a committee. You might wanna be on a number of committees, but there might be one that really um, uh, attracts you more so than others to want to take on the committee chair. And look at all these committees. Oh my gosh. So some of these are three years, but they are at the discretion of each governor. Um, we have membership, district trainer, public image, which has some sub chairs in it. And the same thing for youth services. They also have sub chairs. Some of these, um, we ask that most of these not be working in silos, that you have committees, but there are some that pretty much work on their own. The speakers bureau, the awards chair. Um, and I, that's it coming to mind for me right now. So all of these are available. Um, Desiree has filled most of them. And I am in the process of filling many of them. Uh, many of them have already been filled, but I have about 14 left for the 22, 23 year to, um, to fill. So if there's an interest in serving as a chair or on these committees, please let either Desiree or I know. Thanks. Um, me know, me know. All right, so just to <laughs> share my grammar, what do you do? Well, first of all, because you are at the pleasure of the governor, you report to the governor. Um, and holding committee meetings regularly is of course very critical. Many of our big committees meet at least monthly or meet monthly, but many others will meet quarterly or so on. Um, the district uh, conference committee, they meet monthly and they've been meeting for about a year and a half now, it seems like for your conference, Desiree. Uh, attend Correct. staff meetings. Now this next year, Desiree will be holding quarterly staff meetings. I have yet to determine what that'll look like for my term. I wanna see how hers goes first. Develop your committee 
And your committee needs to be very diverse. It needs to be from many, many different clubs. Because again, you all come in with different perspectives, different vibes, and you can develop that committee. And I think this one is really important. And having gone through my training, half of my training, Desiree having gone through both two years of her training, we develop our vision. We take that very, uh, we're very proud about our vision. We work very hard on creating it. And so as the district chair, although you may have many ideas and goals of your own, they do need to support the district governor's vision. There's a reason she or he has put that vision together. So, oops, did I get it? There we go. So that's your district chairs. And let's move on to assistant governors. Oh, my mouse is just moving everywhere. Okay, so to be, um, to be an assistant governor, you need to have specific skills. We'll talk about that. You need to have some characteristics and there are commitments. Um, the uh, Quarterly, the clubs will pay for your lunch or dinner or breakfast, whatever me meetings you are going to. Um, and so you shouldn't be out of pocket for those expenses. However, if you do um, want to show up on a monthly basis, then you're gonna be out of pocket for a couple of those. Um, just so you know that. Travel is not reimbursed, but this year that wasn't a big deal. So, um, but it will be going forward. And your time, your time is as much as you want to put into it. Quarterly meetings um, are required, but anything else beyond that is entirely up to you. We have a couple of AGs out there right now that are just so involved with their clubs and it's fabulous, it's just fabulous. Okay, so district governor skills and characteristics. Well, the first thing that, this is the Mac mouse here that keeps flipping on me. Uh, must, you must be a past president. Uh, some of us went right from, one, right from past president into AG, but it's typical that you wait a year or two before you become an AG just to serve at other levels of the district. You serve for a three-year term at the pleasure of each district governor. Um, you must be a good communicator, which means you're a good listener. Uh, communication is critical to this role. And also your ability to bring people together. One of my biggest challenges as an AG was to bring every, the four clubs that I have together because we're all so busy and to come up with the time. And so that, that, was, that was a difficult hurdle to get over. Coaching skills, being able to help out, to find those needs and, and help the, the uh, presidents with them. You need to be a per people person. You've got to be a fun person and enjoyable to other people. And finally, you must have a knowledge of your district, of our district. What is the big picture? What activities are we taking on? What are roles that we need to impart? And what are the processes that we go through as a district? Uh, these, the roles and responsibilities of the AG are to visit assigned clubs, as I said, on a quarterly basis, assist clubs with problem solving. Yes. There are problems out there, and yes, you will have to assist with them inevitably. So helping out with that, you know, you, you don't necessarily always want to be involved in it, but you can be in the background giving advice. Sometimes things have to go to the governor uh, and through the AG, and sometimes we may have a disaster or an emergency that we have to deal with. So you need to be able to problem solve. Notifying your governor of issues as appropriate and necessary is very, very important. Promoting club collaboration among area clubs on a local and global service project is also very important. My club supports, uh, my club Laguna Sunrise supports Elk Grove in their fundraisers and Elk Grove supports us in our fundraisers. And it's just a really nice sense of unity in our community together. Uh, another thing I want to bring up is that um, as assistant governor is to help and understand that there are other organizations out there that our clubs can be involved with. And so to help our clubs do that would be great. You will attend club meetings, you'll attend their assemblies, you'll attend their fundraisers and other events if you're invited. And you'll attend club meetings with the DG visits. So when Desiree's out there uh, the first half of her term, um, she will be calling on all 39, 40 clubs and uh, your job would be to assist the clubs as they schedule, let the presidents know what they have to do at those meetings, what their role is, um, and, and planning the district governor visit. You will also be required to introduce the governor at each of those visits. So you don't wanna hand that off to a president, that's your job. You'll attend a district staff and AG meetings. 
and attend pets, which is mandatory. And I wrote some notes here for myself. You need to also attend, which is mandatory, mandatory uh, pre-pets, the district assembly and the mid-year retreat. We wanna be at all of those. Okay, Desiree, it's back to you. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about the district governor, but before we um, go too deep into it, Karen has gone through two of the three levels of leadership, the district committee chair and the assistant governor. Does anybody have any questions about either of those two? We've got, we have plenty of time, trust me. <laughs> We've got plenty of time. Put them in the chat box or um, if you want to do that, or if you can unmute yourself, uh, shout out. We just want to give people a chance to ask those questions that they may have. Okay. If you have a question, um, I'm fine if you want to just interrupt us as we go along. I'm going to go ahead and continue moving. So we're going to talk about being the district governor. And when you think about being a district governor, what kind of timeline do you think, how much time do you think you're going to spend if you take on the role of district governor? So, Oh, a lot of people think, well, it's a one-year gig, right? But wait, there's more. Okay, Karen, what's the first thing that happens? You are a DGD. So now we're going to get into all of Rotary's great acronyms. District Governor Designate. That is what Sydney Smith is right now. And it's a six-month period. Our selection process usually happens in January of every year and you become the district governor designate upon selection, and you are a designate until July 1 of that year. So it's a six month period. Not a lot to do in this time frame. Not a lot to do. Um, that's the nice <laughs> period. Then you become the district governor nominee on July 1 of that year. That is a one year term as a district governor nominee, and we'll go through exactly what a nominee has to do during their year. Then after you're a district governor nominee, now you are a district governor elect. Karen, <laughs> Karen, <laughs> can we, there we go. And that's, uh, so Karen is our current district governor nominee. I am the current district governor elect. Again, it's a one year um, term. The, it starts getting busier. Uh, it's really not a lot going on as a DGD. It starts ramping up as a DGN. It really gets into full swing as a DGE. So it's getting busy. And then finally you get to be district governor. So after two and a half years, you finally get to start the year as a district governor. And you serve as one year as a district governor. But wait, you think, okay, I'm done. Well, you're not. You now become not only a PDG, which is a past district governor, you are an IPDG, which is the immediate past district governor. Uh, you all have immediate past presidents in your club. It's the same thing, immediate past district governor. That is, um, during that year in RILA, we um, partner with District 5190 with RILA. It's a 5180-5190 joint venture. And we trade off with District 5190 on being a RILA chair or the secretary for the year. So in, in a year, say uh, currently, District 5180 is the secretary for the uh, RILA board. So that would be Ray Ward, our immediate past district governor, is the current secretary of RILA. And the current committee chair of the RILA board is District 5190 immediate past district governor, Roberta Pickett. Next year, District 5180 will take over the RILA chair, um, the immediate past district governor, which would be Brent Hasty, and their immediate past district governor will become the, the secretary. So. We switch off, but you're going to take one of those positions as the immediate past district governor. Then after that, you lose the I, and now you're a PDG, but wait, you stay on, and you now become the chair of our advisory committee. And that's a committee that meets once a month, and it's the DG line and past district governors that advise things on at the district level and what's going on and advise the district governor, the sitting district governor. And you are on that committee for several years. And next, Karen. 
<laughs> so you stay on the advisory committee and then for, for four years past being district governor, uh, you're on the nominating committee and the nominating committee is the one that selects the district governor designate. It selects our council on legislation representative and it selects our representative to go and be on the committee to select our um, zone Rotary International Director. So the nominating committee uh, selects three different positions there. And when you are four years past your year as being district governor, you become the chair of that nominating committee. So when you think, hey, that's a one year gig, that sounds pretty good. It's really a longer commitment. And I will tell you, you know that going in and it looks a little daunting here, but every year is different and every year holds some really great fun and opportunity. Um, we got a question in the chat box from past district governor, Brian Moore. Uh, he's asking a question I know he knows the answer to, but I think it's a good question, Brian. Thanks for bringing it up. And that is, what role does the partner or spouse of the district governor have? And Brian, are you able to speak and unmute yourself now? Because I was going to say you could answer that one. <laughs> can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. All right, fine. Good. <laughs> Let's try this again. I don't need to put in a video. I'll just, you'll just hear my voice. Um, okay. By, by and large, uh, the spouse or partner of the district governor uh, plays a key, key role in number one, providing support to the district governor during his or her year. Okay. And that can support not only is accompanying him or her, uh, at the various functions that they're invited to, because as a district governor, you are in every one of the clubs wants you there. You are a prize, okay, in your year as district governor. And once you become a past district governor, eh, there are plenty of them are running around. You don't worry about them, okay? But it, it's important to recognize that any spouse uh, or partner is going to play a key role uh, if their partner becomes a district governor. So please don't think that if your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend isn't gonna have a role, they will. And I, I just wanna make sure that there is, it's more than one person involved here when we're talking about a district governor. Does that suffice for you? <laughs> That, that works well, Brian. And to, to your point, yes, your partner's spouse is part of this, but it's to the extent they want to be included in a lot of these things. Um, we've seen district governors where their spouse is by their side at every event, every club meeting, and others, they say, you know, I'll just go to this event or that event, whatever it works for you and your partner's spouse is fine. And we'll get into, there is training for partners and spouses. So I'll talk about that um, as we go forward here. So thank you, Brian. All right, Karen, let's talk about, okay, so the district governor designate, as I said, doesn't, not a lot to do in that first six months. So Sydney, I will tell you, enjoy it because <laughs> you become a district no governor nominee and you start, start working a little harder. Um, this is where some of the things that you start doing in your year as a nominee is you start selecting your assistant governors. And if, if, there are, if you've got people that are already in place that are maybe in the first year as, of a three-year term or the second year of a three-year term, you want to look at them. Are they somebody that's doing a great job and you want them to continue? Again, they serve at the discretion of the district governor. So you look at them and you go, hey, you know, you, this, this person's doing a great job, we want them to continue. I will say that you should really talk to them and make sure they want to continue. Um, you don't want to just assume that they know that they've still got that third year left and that you're going to want them in that position. Start looking at those district chairs and then some of your staff. And I will go back to this is where, as a nominee, People are starting, you're needing to talk to people and make those connections. And when you're on those district leadership committee chairs or committee positions, and you're talking to the current leaders, that's how those connections get made. And they'll say, hey, I'm looking for somebody to be my youth services chair. And I remember so-and-so did a great job as a committee chair on this. So I'm going to talk to them about it. So, um, and we've put in here 
in parentheses once the district governor elect is finished. And again, uh, Karen, Sydney, and I are working really well together. We don't step on toes. So until I'm pretty well done with my staff, Karen doesn't want to start you know, snagging staff that maybe I was looking at until my positions are pretty well filled. And then she goes forth and Sydney's kind of hanging on and assessing the situation. So it's a timing thing on that. You'll also want to start um, looking at a district conference chair. As Karen said, uh, the district conference committee that is uh, putting on the district conference for the year, I'm going to be district governor. And the district conference will be May of 20. April, May of 2022 in South Lake Tahoe. Uh, we, they've been meeting for a year and a half because it takes a lot to put on a district conference. So start scoping out chairs there and then a location and you got to start thinking about a venue. Are you going to be local? Or are you going to be out of town? And how do you want to work it? And then you can start informally visiting the clubs. Get out there, get to know clubs, get to know their vibe, get to know what their specialties are, what their traditions are. As I said, every club is different and it's really cool to visit all of those clubs and start getting to know people. And that's where you can also start looking for some of your staff people. You will become a part of the Far West Pets Planning Committee. And as a district governor nominee, you don't have a big role, but you start seeing how it all comes together and it helps you prepare for when you're gonna be the district governor elect on that committee. And then you informally attend district committee meetings as you can. We've got the foundation committee. If you're not sure how much you know about the foundation or you don't think you know a lot, start attending the foundation committee meeting. Um, you can attend membership committee meetings, international services, start getting a good sense of what's happening in all of these committees. What we got to institute this year, and you know, we keep trying to find what, what good did the pandemic bring to us, and it brought Zoom. And I know many people are, have Zoom fatigue, but what it did bring is the opportunity to meet with your classmates. And Karen and I have both had this opportunity. We meet monthly on Zoom. Now, these are our classmates from zones 26 and 27. It's 30 other or 29 other districts from Arizona, parts of Texas, Idaho, uh, Vancouver, uh, part into Canada. There's no way we could meet in person um, frequently. So being able to do this on Zoom, we've become closer with our classmates and we share ideas. It's been a great experience and our zone director uh, our incoming zone director, Vicki Pulitz, has set those up to meet with us once a month. And then the current zone director, Jarita Solari, has the whole DG line from the current district governor, district governor-elect, nominee, and designate all meeting from 30 districts once a month. And it's amazing the sharing of ideas, and it's great. Uh, you will attend the monthly district finance and advisory committee meetings. Those are held monthly. We had ours this month. We had it this morning. And again, those are looking at all the running the district and issues uh, concerning all the everything about the district. Okay, another acronym here, GNTS. It's, we call it NATS. It's Governor Nominee Training Seminar. That is held in a different location every year. Uh, <laughs> this year it was held virtually. A year ago it was held in Denver. Before that it was uh, Reno. I know it's been held over in Hawaii. Um, and next year it's going to be held in Tucson, Arizona. NATS is Governor Nominee Training. It's um, five days long. It's intense. But starting in July 1, and that's always held like in November, starting on July 1, the year you become a nominee, you start getting homework leading up to your NATS training. So every week you will get homework. And Karen said it took her a couple hours a week sometimes. For me, the governor-elect training, it was only about sometimes an hour, sometimes a half hour. And then you get together with your classmates and you talk about the homework. So, so you'll attend NATS and you will attend the Zone Institute. And the Zone Institute, is I call it, it's the district conference for districts, like a district conference is for clubs, the Zone Institute is, is for districts. Again, we talked about the RILA board, you're now a member of the RILA board, 
And then you also need to start looking at your theme and create your logo. And you got to start envisioning what you want to do there. So do we have any questions on being a nominee? OK, so let's move on to the next step. Then you become the elect. And as I said, this is where it really starts ramping up. And I'm going to go a little out of order here. I mentioned that on July 1, as a nominee, you started getting homework. As a governor-elect, it's the same thing. You start getting homework. It's different stuff. You start, you get a lot of the real detailed stuff in Nats. In, as a governor-elect, you start learning a little bit more about public speaking and uh, env envisioning process, et cetera. It's really interesting and it's amazing training. So, and then you end up at the Zone Institute again. And what's really cool is GETS goes on at the same time Nats does. So your governor nominee is in training at the same location, same hotel, at the same time you're in training as a governor elect, but you're in different rooms, but then you do get to come together and talk about what do you wanna do in the district and you get some good continuity planning going there. But as a governor elect, I'm now gonna go back up to the top and say, okay, now you're continuing to put your staff together, still working with your conference chair and picking a location and continuing working on your conference planning still out there visiting the clubs. It's getting a little more important as a governor elect because you're starting to meet your president's elect because they're being selected in the club during your year as governor elect. And you're gonna be attending the Far West Pets Planning Committee and you have a different role as a district governor elect because that pets is considered your pets. It's the one where you're bringing in your president's elect to be trained. So you have much greater input in the, on the planning committee, and then you attend Far West Pets. And as a district governor elect, uh, we did it virtual this year, but you normally have three breakout sessions, you and the president's elect at Pets. And it's your turn, time to talk to them and uh, see how their training is going, what they're thinking, impart any information that you wanna share with them. And you usually go over the district budget at that time. And speaking, um, well, we've got building the budget and you have to submit that to the advisory committee. So you have to build the budget for the district operating budget for the following year. You get help with that. It's you're not out there on your own. Um, but you also start planning your training. Uh, this is where it got so crazy busy. Um, January of this year, you know, we're working on pre-pets, we're working on pets, we're working on post-pets, we're working on district assembly, this festival of learning, and you've got so much that you're trying to plan. So it gets a little crazy busy, but if you've got a great team, which I am so grateful for this year, a fabulous team that really pulled it all together. So you're working on that. Um, I mentioned building the budget. Again, attending those district committee meetings, getting yourself up to speed on what's happening in our district with those just different committees. And again, meeting monthly with the zone director and your classmates, those monthly district finance and advisory committee meetings, I mentioned gets in zone, that happens in November. What I hear, and I only heard, because I wasn't able to attend in person, but international assembly is kind of like the big kahuna event for a district governor elect. It is the, the opportunity for every district governor elect in the world to come together in one location and to meet each other and to go through additional training. It was supposed to be held in Orlando, Florida this past February. And of course that wasn't gonna happen. So um, we did virtual and it was, obviously not the same. We got to be in breakout sessions with people from other countries and it, that was pretty cool, um, but it wasn't the same as being there in person, but that's really everything I hear is a big fabulous, just a fabulous event. And then again, you'll be on the RILA board at, at that time. And um, Brian Moore has put in the chat box, any out of pocket expense for this. And Brian, thank you so much. You give me a, a great segue. Um, into that. So if we can have, uh, we'll be talking about all the money here. We're going to go through district governor and then we'll get to all of the, the costs to do this process. District governor. Okay. So 
I remember asking Brent as I was knee deep in all of this planning this past January, February, I said, Brent, please tell me that on July 1, when you actually become district governor, it gets a little easier. And he goes, it actually kind of does. So you're now doing formal club visits. It's not, gee, if you get a chance, go visit a club. It is a requirement that you attend and do an official district governor visit with every club in the district. And our district's tradition is that you have those all completed between when the year starts in July to uh, by no later than the end of December. So my plan is for next year is not to start the official district governor visits until August to give those brand new presidents a chance to get their sea legs and figure out what they're doing as a president before the district governor comes in. So you have those club visits. You again, meet monthly with the zone RI director and your classmates, again, still attending those district finance and advisory committee meetings, but now they're looking to you for you to bring them issues, things going on, what's happening. What do you need their support on? What do you need their input on? What do you need to share with them? What information do you need to share with them to keep them apprised of what's going on? also get to do a mid-year retreat that usually happens in January. It's the opportunity to bring all the presidents together and talk about what's working, what, where do you need some help? And you want to get them engaged to finish out the rest of the year strong. It's really fun. You, you start in July as a president and you're, you're going and you're going and you're going and then the holidays happen and then it's the new year and you kind of run out of gas and a mid-year retreat is the opportunity to bring all those presidents back together to get everybody recharged and help them set a course for the, the following six months and finish out their year strong. The, the fun part, the highlight, you also get to host your district conference. So all of that big conference planning that you've been doing comes to fruition at your district conference. And that is a celebration, recognition, uh, motivation and inspiration. And that's just bottom line, it's uh, going to be a lot of fun, but with all of those elements. And then you end, attend the international convention. Again, <laughs> this year's international convention in Taipei, but uh, it's been virtual. So I'm going to be attending virtually, but next year it will be in Houston, Texas in June, because who doesn't want to go hit the humidity in Texas in June? So we're going to have a grand time going down to Houston next year for the International Convention. Okay. Any questions so far? We're going to talk money. So, okay, go ahead. Um, Untold role, the DG dresses as Santa Claus for the RYE students in December. Good to know. The, that may be the good news. The bad news is <laughs> we are not going to have an RYE program. Um, that it, We're going to have a virtual one, but we will not have students in from other countries this coming year. So another disappointment. But hey, I get out of having to dress as Santa Claus. So <laughs> thanks for that, uh, Brian. Oh, no, you're doing um, it virtually. You're doing it virtually. We got the Santa suit. I'll have to. That is correct. You could do it virtually too. Yes. Dang it. Dang it. Okay. All right. So what does this cost you to be, be a district governor? I mean, you've seen the whole list of things you have to do and you're thinking, where is all this money coming from? For your years as a district governor nominee and a district governor elect, the district provides a, a generous stipend. And that is to be used when you travel to visit the clubs as a DGE or a DGN, you just wanna go what's happening and check the clubs out and visit with them and get to know them and they get to know you. That mileage, the travel is covered. Um, I had theme pins done, which you will all get eventually um, for the year that I'm going to be district governor, our Rotary Superhero pins, and paid for that out of my stipend. Um, you pay for prepads. Now, when you have prepads in person, it's in town. We have to pay for, usually a lot of times, pay for a venue. We pay for food or snacks or lunch, binders, documents, and all of that. And stationary. I had business cards done. I had uh, note cards with my logo on them. I had note cards that were just a little more formal without my logo, uh, but they were the rotary logo. And so that stuff adds up. Hey, I've Frank, paid for. Um, there's one thing we forgot on here. And um, 
it's uh, socials, socials. Yeah, socials. So again, normally uh, the district governor elect holds a president elect social, usually in the fall or the or j uh, January, and you meet in person and there's food and everything, and that would come out of the stipend as well. So the goal is not to have somebody have to come out of pocket to be in any of these positions. We don't want people to say, well, I can't afford to be a district governor. So that's that's why the stipends are provided from the district. When you get to be a district governor, the stipends are provided by Rotary International. And they, with your input, they ask you for how far away are your clubs and what's the mileage and how many overnights will you have. You send them that information. They do other calculations and they send you back a dollar amount um, figure and they say, this is what you're going to get. They will send that dollar amount in total to the district treasurer and he will parcel it out to me as the year goes along. But so that stipend will cover, it covers the trip to international convention and your trip to the international convention as a D DGE is also covered by the district. It covers your attendance at NATS and gets training by the district too. So um, it, as I said, we're, the goal is not to come out of pocket, not to keep money being a barrier to people wanting to be a district governor and the DG line. Any questions? I know one of the things that I actually heard on the, um, for, in the list of it, eligible expenses to be used from the stipend from Rotary International is a new computer and um, or office supplies or stamps. So they know that if you've got stationery and you're gonna send out notes, you're gonna have to pay postage to send them out. So there's a lot of different things that are covered. So again, they also, they make it very um, doable for you to participate in, in being a district governor. So any questions on money? Any questions on any of this stuff that we've covered? We've gone through it, um, just wanna make sure we've answered any questions people might have. We didn't give you exact hours on how much each one of these roles takes because it depends on what you do, but you, you could see from all the things that you're involved in, we hope you can kind of extrapolate how much time commitment you might think that could be. Uh, Mary Jo posted a question, when does the application process start? Usually notices go out in the fall that we're gonna be looking for applications. An application date is set and usually the applications have been due sometime in the middle of December. And, and then interviews are in January. And I gotta tell you, <laughs> Karen and I and Sydney have all been through this process. The really nice thing is you, everybody who's interviewed is all interviewed on the same day and you hear the same day whether you did or didn't get it. And um, that's really nice. It's immediate feedback. So it, you don't have to sit around and wait for weeks. And I, and I will tell you, it's, it's not standard that the first time you interview, you get selected. That's unusual. Um, and now that I've said that, Karen, <laughs> Karen Centro was selected on her first time interviewing and Sydney Smith was selected on his first time interviewing. I was not and I, I'm okay to admit that but it's because there's so many great people in the district and it's can be a, it can be a tough experience. So I always tell people throw your if you're sort of interested throw your application in it lets the committee know that you're interested Chances probably you won't get it the first time, but it lets, gets you comfortable with the experience so that you're ready the next year. Uh, another question, what is the quality of Nats and GETS training for the nominee and the governor-elect as, as compared to the rest of the Rotary world? Um, Brian, your question, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Is your question, um, you mean, what do we do here in our zone for that compared to what other Rotarians are get? Yes, <clears throat> basically, um, years ago, <laughs> when I went through the process, um, we found that the quality of training and preparation through our zone gets and nats was well over the ability and quality of the rest of the rotary world, to the point to where when you attend the International Assembly, 
supposedly that is where a lot of the training for some of the uh, third world countries get. And the only training they get is at the assembly. And we were told, and I recall very vividly in my year, that the instructors at the assembly don't want our people, our classmates, to be raising our hands all the time when they ask a question, that we should be quiet even though we know the answer and let someone else have the opportunity to guess. And I had to ask the question, why? And that's when they told me, because your zone is one of the best zones for preparing nice. your people for the Rotary service. So anybody that's going to participate in this program can be reassured that they are getting the best that Rotary has to offer. I felt like I went through an MBA program in my, yeah. in my NAS. We, we dealt with conflict <laughs> management. We dealt with crisis management. We dealt with communication. <clears throat> I know more about Rotary than I can, I ever even imagined what to do. I would, I remember sitting back at, um, at PEPS a year ago and look, looking at the governors up there, knowing that someday I was going to be there. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so poised and I'm such a dork. <laughs> How is this going to happen? How are they going to create this? And Lo and behold, I'm getting pretty good at it. So yeah, the training is exceptional, exceptional. We are very, very fortunate. <laughs> we have some very, very talented instructors in our zone. And in many cases, what we do here in this zone is mirrored throughout the rest of the Rotary world. We are held in that high a stature when it comes to Rotary. So trust be assured that if you follow this path, you will get the best training ever. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that comment and that distinction, and you're correct. And I think maybe that's why our past district governors have said IA, International Assembly, is a great, the greatest thing, probably because we get to spend more time enjoying it instead of having to learn because we're already far ahead of of everybody else. But um, I'm going to go to the chat box, and it looks like Randy has posed a great question. For all those of us that are in the DG pipeline, why did you want to become a DG and a district governor? And I will answer, for me, um, I felt it was another way I could serve Rotary and the district. It was something that I had been a president of my club. I enjoyed doing it. I love, I immerse myself in Rotary. And I just thought, okay, this is another way I can serve my district a little bit beyond the club. So Karen, you wanna share? I, yeah, identical. I just felt like I had the skill set to be able to go in and do this. Um, it's something that very much excited me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wanna go to the next question with that also is how long were you a Rotarian? I became a Rotarian. I'm probably the rookie of the group. Um, I didn't <laughs> Rotary until 2012, but my husband's been a Rotarian <coughs> for 20 plus years. And I, um, I feel like I've been a member of Point West for a really, really long time before I joined um, Elk Grove and then Laguna Sunrise. So although I have only been around for about 10 years, I've really been around for about 20 years um, with experience. <laughs> I had to, and I had I, to age out of the PTA. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been in Rotary 12 years. Um, and, you know, I don't know that there's a typical, but you have to have been a past president. It's preferred that you've chaired a district committee. I chaired the district conference committee for Jack Arney's conference. I was um, on the district foundation committee as the annual giving officer. I was also the public uh, image person for the human trafficking initiative. And I had been an assistant governor for three years. So I had had that kind of experience. So when you think of what it takes to get that kind of experience, usually you're at 10 to 12 to longer years, but there's, you know, and you're not gonna come out of being a past, of being a president and then head right into a DG line. That usually doesn't happen with no other, you know, if you're a brand new president. Um, right. When I got into Rotary, I immediately went into RYE and became the uh, outbound coordinator, so. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Denise, thank you for your nice comment. Uh, and Sydney's asking, Desiree, what is the preeminent need from you all that, uh, to ensure that 
I'm successful, thus making us successful. And Sydney, you hit it right with that last part. My job and goal is to support the clubs to make them achieve the goals that they want to achieve, help them get to where they want to go. I know a lot of people look at the district as kind of a parental type figure and it's not what it's about. Yeah, there's some things we say either you kind of have to do this and you have to do that, but mostly we're here to how can we help you? That's why we have district committee chairs. We have a vocational service chair. So when your club wants to do vocational service and you're not sure what that means, you can go to that district um, committee and that chairperson. When you want dictionaries, we've got a dictionary um, program person so that they're coordinating the dictionaries so your club isn't out doing them on their own. So we are providing support. So I think Sydney, to answer your question, we need to know what you all need um, in the clubs and you work through your assistant governors and or I'm open, you can call me, text me, email me, and um, I'm here to listen to what people wanna do. And I'm always one about where do you wanna go? Let me help you get there. So thank you for asking the question, Sydney. You're welcome. If I could speak to also the question that you, yeah. you both of you answered prior, um, I could say, I can tell you with all sincerity that when, first of all, I've been involved with Rotary since 2002. And um, one of my heroes and one of my mentors was a guy by the name of Hal Shipley. So much so that when um, I had to leave uh, my club because of work for a number of years and Hal found out about it and he would pick me up and take me to all these club visits with him. Cause he says, Sydney, you got to stay involved in Rotary. And uh, you know, Hal has since passed away. But uh, you know, when I was approached about being a president, I laughed because I never visualized myself being a president. And then um, when Desiree contacted me about being an assistant governor, I can just say this about Desiree. She does not take no for an answer. I'll tell you that. She, uh, she I told her no, and uh, we went, kind of went back and forth. I, out of all due respect um, to her, I, I seriously considered it as she asked me to. And then the whole issue of um, becoming a district governor came up. I will say this about that. There might be some of you on this line who don't see yourself in that role. There may be some of you who couldn't wait or, I mean, are just chomping at the bit to be a district governor. I will say this for me. What made me decide to apply was um, I feel very passionately about 1.2 million. And for those of you who have been around a while, you know that. Uh, in 02, that was the number when I joined Rotary. Um, I left for a while and came back. And when I came back, that was the number. And so for me, when I look around our communities and when I see people um, that are not Rotarians, but are doing all the same things that we do as Rotarians, in my mind, I'm thinking they're a Rotarian. They just don't know it yet. And so I'm extremely passionate about our district. Uh, like you heard before, we have an amazing team of trainers and people that can coach you up. What made me sign up was really wanting other people to get to experience the friendships and the fellowship that I've had the chance to experience for nearly 20 years. There is so much out there to learn and so much to do. And so that is why I applied to be district governor. Thank you, Sydney. And I'm glad you didn't say no, ultimately. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's where I, I will tell you, I'm going to tell you why I called Sydney and wanted to talk to him about being an assistant governor. I saw him at pre-pets when he was a president-elect. I saw him at mid-year retreat and I heard about him and I heard what he was doing. He just impressed the heck out of me. So it's being out there, putting yourself out there and getting to know people and who they are. And when you're building your staff, you look that way. When you want to be part of this, the DG line or any one of these district leadership positions, you go talk to the current leaders. Communication. Thanks, Sydney. Any other questions? I want to be respectful, respectful of time. It's 7.54. So um, if I don't have any other questions, um, I think we'll go ahead and call it a night. I want to thank you all for being here. I think the last slide, Karen, has our information. No, I didn't or put it. Or not. <laughs> okay. Um, we, you, you can email us if you know how to find uh, numbers in the district website, search the e-member directory. We're there. 
don't hesitate to call, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you to Randy, our tech support guy. Appreciate it, Randy. Great the job. Best. Matt Randy. <laughs> the best. Good job. Thank